Hello guys, my name is Amit Sani and I welcome you in this daily Hindu Nas video. In the morning, these videos come in the evening, the PIB videos come. For the Sunday, PIBs are off and other days, PIBs uh, you are getting in both the languages and these lessons are on daily basis. So, today is the Sunday session, 90th of May it is and uh, as I told you earlier also that this session is going to be very much important for the prelims examination uh, who are the people who are appearing for this year or maybe next to next year, next year then it is going to be the ultimate session because we are going to revise the most important things of the environment section and uh, some uh, questions, some important uh, uh, concepts, some uh, issue regarding the critically endangered and the endangered species which are there in India and they are frequently asked and some informations from the today's newspaper. So let's start the lesson and please share it if you like it and uh, please do not miss these lessons and every day I'm giving you discussing uh, these uh, MCQs and all and extremely important these things are. This is the uh, website address here and here these uh, these are the numbers there you can call and you can ask for these pendrive courses or are available at 60% off. So let's start environmental cost of a digital planet you see we are using all these technologies and all and we are always discussing that technology is the ultimate help giver that is correct but you see it may give help in many many uh, issues but it is actually using a lot of electricity because without elect electricity and without uh, their batteries and all they cannot work so when we are uh, charging these batteries or when we are using these instruments or when we are using technology uh, per se so we are uh, actually going to consume energy here and that would be produced by the coal consumption uh, if we talk about India mainly because maximum energy maximum electricity is uh, produced uh, by burning the coal only so it's not a non-conventional source it's a conventional source and it is uh, leaving its carbon footprints everywhere and uh, the carbon emissions are a reality here so whenever we are using electricity here we are harming environment in some way so that is why this shift this particular change in uh, dependence on these uh, conventional sources towards non-conventional sources is very very needed we have made a goal of 40 percent energy mix till 2030 that's a very ambitious goal because 40 percent is a huge thing and the, this is a huge country and uh, we are using uh, billions and billions of uh, liters of oil every day and our need needs of uh, energies they are based on these conventional fuels so 40 percent needs would be coming from the non-conventional sources by 2030 that is our goal so electricity electric vehicles and all and solar panels uh, uh, wind energy all these things would be needed and uh, a lot of efforts investments technology adoptions uh, political will policies we will need there then only this thing would be possible otherwise according to the, to the data if we send a 1 mb email 1 megabyte email then it will equal to 20 grams of co2 emission because that much co2 would be released when we will produce energy for uh, uh, charging the instrument that is going to send the 1 megabyte email so that is the case here and uh, it's a carbon intensive sector and you see the contribution of the communication technological sector in this carbon emission was 2.5% in 13 and now it is close to 4% in 2020. Within 7 years it is approaching 4%. So it's a huge number and uh, you see the way we are uh, going on then uh, the average temperature would rise more than 2-3 degrees centigrade by the end of the century. So this is uh, a very uh, a troublesome phase but people and the countries and these uh, in these organizations and these programs they are not doing much we need war scale efforts otherwise not much is going to change uh, as we discussed uh, two days back when this report was there that big steps are needed today small steps are not going to change anything and we will not be able to uh, stop this rise uh, uh, to reaching up to three four degrees centigrade uh, from the average uh, situation okay so that's the thing Next, distant flyby. New Horizons is a very specific uh, uh, spacecraft that NASA sent and it is approaching the interstellar space now. You see, this is Sun here. Sun, the Helios name is attached with Sun and this is Heliosphere till here. Means the Sun's gravity works till here. So this is Heliosphere. All these planets are there and after Pluto. You can see, this is the Kuiper belt where some dwarf planets and all, all we are found, uh, we are finding and all these are rocky particles and uh, this these are spread into a particular disk so this is a Kuiper belt as we call it 
and after Kuiper belt, this is Oud cloud. Means it's a cloudy, a cloud-like area, but uh, filled with dust, a lot of uh, rocky materials and all. And uh, after that, that is the interstellar space. Interstellar space means the space between two stars. The sun's uh, dominance and the uh, uh, in, uh, the influence is spreading up to here, up to this Kuiper belt and the Oud cloud. After the blank space which is there, that is the space between this star sun and some other star, maybe Alpha Centauri, you can take the example here. So this star is present here and this is sun. So the space between both these stars would be interstellar space. You must have heard about this phenomena in a movie, interstellar movie that came and that was the very brilliant movie and the gravity movie that was also ultimate so please watch these things these are extremely uh, interesting things and upsc is focusing a lot on this area because it is the really a new horizon for humans and the name also is, is uh, given to this particular spacecraft as new horizons because it is showing us great things it sent as the pluto picture the heart shaped uh, uh, design on the pluto planet so that was sent by new horizons only so here ultima tool as we uh, i don't know the right pronunciation here ultima tool i'm calling it so that object the name is given to this object that is the farthest world humans have explored using new horizons of spacecraft so very soon it is going to send us pictures also and uh, this is uh, red in color and uh, the a conduct binary it's two lobes were initially separated and merged due to tidal force so, so it's a particular entity that we have uh, observed in space because of this new horizons so very soon more clarity would be there but you see this is showing us really new horizons new things and it is approaching the interstellar space and you see voyager 1 pioneer 11 and voyager 2 these were uh, earlier space spacecraft which are traveling through this interstellar space so they are far away but new horizon becomes much more important because it is sending us uh, many uh, data like pictures and all so that's important next a new material called pdk was recently discovered you see it is a very important question for this year uh, this is a re recyclable plastic in uk they discovered or actually they uh, produced this uh, polydi keto in a mine or pdk it's a recyclable plastic what is plastic plastic is a polymer polymer and polymers are uh, made up of uh, many monomers and monomers are the uni single units of any uh, molecule so at the molecule uh, these uh, monomer level they are changing some things some in, uh, ingredients they are changing and uh, the chemical structure is totally changed if we if we gonna dip this uh, recyclable plastic pdk in acid then all these bonds would be broken at the monomer level so uh, this can be easily degraded and the best part is that that there would be no loss of performance or the quality of these monomers so they can shape uh, again and again without loss of performance and equality uh, the, the quality so this is how it becomes much more important much more innovative much more creative and uh, it's a great solution also plastic is one of the biggest problem in this uh, planet and uh, this is how we are addressing this issue so technology is helping here uh, plastic was also a technology and this is again a technological solution here so this is the way we are going on now keystone species foundation species flagship species these are some terms which are frequently asked so we will learn about that you see in some area uh, tigers lions crocodiles elephants these are there and these are bigger animals and uh, leaving elephant aside these are carnivorous and these are main apex predators in their respective ecosystems so you see when tiger is there then uh, it eats deers and all and uh, hogs and all so it is the ultimate predator there after that when it dies nobody can eat tiger or lion they are their dead bodies are eaten as carcasses by these uh, eagles or maybe these bacteria and all which are uh, devouring their uh, dead meats so uh, these uh, top predators they are actually a very important part of this ecosystem means suppose if there is no tiger then these populations of deers that would rise uh, very fast and they have enormous capability of uh, reproduction also because they need to survive so their numbers will go very high and uh, the thing that they are eating that is these are grasses and and, and uh, small shrubs and all so they will be gone because all these deers what they, how they are going to survive they will eat everything so this is how the ecosystem would be devastated so every step 
and every specific animal on a particular level that balances this ecosystem but some species are so specific that there is no alternative so these are called keystone species so tigers lions these are keystone species in their respective areas and a certain species in an ecosystem is considered more important than uh, any other and de determining the presence of many other species in that ecosystem means you see if deers are not there then uh, the tigers may eat some other uh, some other species or something like that so there may be alternatives to the deers but there is no, no alternative to the tiger in the, in a particular ecosystem so in that jungle if tiger would be killed then it would be devastated because all these deers they would eat all the uh, producers of the primary producers so this is the thing about keystone species next foundation species you see again a particular specific ecosystem that would be founded and that would be based on a particular species you can take the example of uh, coral reefs coral reefs are a majestic uh, ecosystem and these sea corals and all they are uh, coming and uh, their bodies their exoskeletons they are attached with each other and this is how after lakhs and crores of years they will be making these coral reefs and kilometers long coral reefs you can see the great barrier reef of uh, australia uh, that that is located east to australian coast so if the corals would not be there then these reefs cannot be created so this is how there would be no coral reef ecosystem there so this is the foundation species and as the same example with the kelps in the kelp forest so these are the foundation species that on the uh, basis of a particular species existence the whole ecosystem is based flagship species you see if you want to run a program a conservation program if you want to attract tourists if you want to uh, signify a particular area like the sundarban deltas are signified by uh, a particular uh, picture of a bengal tiger and uh, you want to uh, show uh, uh, you want to show some uh, uh, concern or you want to spread some awareness about the elephants then elephant corridors then uh, you need to show elephants there so some pictures always we are looking at we are looking at some at some uh, uh, ghadiyals in the chambal area we are looking at uh, indian uh, uh, bengal tiger if we want to actually uh, advertise uh, it in some way some programs or some fundings if you want then these are the specific things so maybe uh, due to the reasons of vulnerability attractiveness or distinctiveness in order to uh, engender support and uh, uh, to make them acknowledged by the public at large so these species some species these are advertised as flagship species you see there are flagship phones uh, by mobile companies so these phones are the best phones uh, available in their company and these are most attractive ones maybe they are most expensive ones so flagship phones so in the same way there are flagship species you show them and you advertise uh, those programs by showing those uh, animals and all so you maybe you want to show some uh, vulnerability maybe you want to show some danger that is there against them so this is how this is how indian tiger african elephant giant panda of china mountain gorilla of central africa these are iconic animals okay so this is the flagship species issue next photosynthesis you see what happens in photosynthesis six uh, molecules of co2 plus uh, six uh, molecules of h2o and they are creating c6h12 no6 plus o2 and uh, sunlight's presence and chlorophyll does that so it is a free energy and it is converted into this uh, chemical of glucose so it's a potential energy in this chemical so it's a chemical energy uh, and the potential potential energy so free energy is converted into potential energy and stored it is stored in leaves and all other parts so in the form of starch it is stored so b would be the correct answer here because energy is being synthesized uh, sorry the chemical is being synthesized here so it's photosynthesis in the presence of light uh, chlorophyll actually synthesizes the glucose by the free energy of co2 and h2 h2o uh, it is sucked by roots and co2 is available in the environment so carbon dioxide is consumed and o2 is released so this is the process of photosynthesis only the green plants which are having chlorophyll they are able to do this so free energy is converted into potential energy or the chemical energy and stored and you see when we eat the food then we uh, we uh, digest that food and that is reaching up to our cells and then we breathe then the oxygen is reaching up to cells and then we oxidize the food and this is how the uh, a lot of energy is created so we oxidize the food plants actually make the food but we eat the food and we oxidize the food to release carbon dioxide and water and energy okay so this is the process which is done in our human bodies or, or say some uh, animal's body so this is wrong b would be the correct answer here okay b is the answer 
Ecotron, you see two different uh, uh, ecosystems are there. This is aquatic uh, uh, area, aquatic ecosystem. This is the land area. This is a area where uh, some specific type of animals would be there. They may uh, want water also. They may want land part also. Maybe for some uh, 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 laying of eggs or something like that. They would go towards the land part and normally they are living in the water. So these kind of species would be there like amphibians frogs tortoise these kind of uh, animals would be found in this particular area it's a transitional area so any area where two different ecosystems are there it's not necessary that it's uh, water and it's land it is not necessary there may be different ecosystems in different areas so there is uh, if there are two different ecosystems so some area would be there where these two are joining itself and that would be the transitional area and these animals would be adaptable to both conditions so this is the transitional area and these species would be called ecotone species okay ecotone e ecotone actually is it's a transitional area and these species would be found as ecotone species and you can say the marshy land this is the area which is close to the river banks and also this is the kind that kind of area that's a transitional ecosystem and these kind of animals would be found there so it's related to evolution also because evolution started uh, in this direction where uh, uh, animals uh, they uh, started their lives in water and they then shifted towards the land part so after the aquatic animals the amphibians came so this is also uh, the case happened with the ecotone areas you can see a and b two different ecosystems in uh, any way if they are uh, uh, connected then in these areas you will find the ecotone area and the ecotone species okay next which is the process adds nitrogen to the soil all the process they add nitrogen to the soil because nitrogen is the main concentrate of our excretory products we are urinating and urea is there aquatic animals they are also releasing ammonia ammonia uh, is released when too much water is available so it is available to the aquatic animals when uh, somehow lesser water is, is available then urea would be the excretory product if very less water amount is available like the birds they do not access much of the water so they will excrete uric acid so these all are containing nitrogen so nitrogen is a very important uh, excretory product it may be very very harmful in your body if you are not able to urinate if your kidneys are damaged then you will certainly die because these uh, uh, negative excretory products they will be very much poisonous for your body so due to all the process nitrogen is added into soil again excretion of urea by animals burning of coal also uh, there also noxs are released death of vegetation also there are many bacteria which are uh, doing nit nitrification and uh, denitrification process so they are adding nitrogen again to the soil so one two three is the correct answer here you can read the text here and uh, this is important okay many times these issues are asked so please go through the uh, text also next excessive inappropriate use of nitrogenous fertilizers as i told you nitrogen is an important constant of excreted product it's also important part of our building uh, blocks of the body you see in dna there are nitrogenous bases so nitrogen is present everywhere nitrogen is there in atmosphere also as inert gas and nitrogen fertilizers they are in a form of nitrate because uh, plants cannot access uh, the free nitrogen and that is not available for them they cannot absorb it they only can absorb it in nitrate form so nitrate is the actual fertilizer because plants need uh, nitrogen also so it is not only their excretory product that is this is their demand also so nitrogen fertilizers they contain nitrate so excessive nitrate uh, where it will go you see this will increase the acidity of soil that is correct and it will leach into the uh, deeper layers of the soil also and it will reach up to the groundwater also so that groundwater table would also be polluted here so uh, that's uh, uh, a truth so two and three is the correct option first is wrong because it will not lead to the proliferation it will actually lesser uh, lessen the amount of uh, uh, mi uh, microorganisms present in the soil so two and three is the correct answer here okay because these uh, natural bacteria like nitro nitrosomonas isidobacter these are nitif nitrifying bacterias and in the normal conditions in the roots of leguminous plants they are present and they are doing this nitrogen fixation they are turning nitrogen into nitrate okay first nitrite then nitrate so ultimately nitrate is available to the plants so this is the bacteria uh, they are uh, doing 
but excess fertilizer that will block this particular process because already the fertilizer would be available to them if excess amount is there then it will uh, reach up to these uh, water bodies and it will do eutrophication because excess fertilizer in the water bodies that will support the growth of phytoplanktons and the algae so that will be uh, the case of eutrophication of the lakes and oceans and why this happened because excessive nitrogen uh, these fertilizers we used and it will reach up to groundwater table also there also the nitrate pollution would be there of the groundwater and that is uh, uh, pumped to the surface by these uh, uh, tube wells and all and we are uh, drinking that water and nitrate is present in that groundwater and that creates a lot of disease in our human bodies so that's the issue two and three is the correct answer here next montrex record you see in 1971 ramsar place is there in iran and uh, there what we did in ramsar the ramsar convention was signed it's an intergovernmental uh, convention and uh, under that they give a list of uh, wetlands in all these countries but there are some specific wetlands where due to human interference so many ecological characters are changed so heavy changes are going on so in india there are two important sites one is kevla devka ghana in eastern rajasthan and loktak lake in manipur so these two places many changes ecological characters are, are being changed because of the human interference so these two are under the montrex record list so it is a separate list under the wetlands list only and that is under the ramsar convention only so this montrex record is related to ramsar convention and specific list because ecological characters are changing so a is the answer here okay and uh, uh, you can see kevla dev national park rajasthan and loktak lake designated as manipur and in both these places migratory birds are coming heavily in number okay next now i am going to uh, tell you some uh, uh, animals plants and all and which are critically endangered and endangered and as many as, as i would be able to uh, uh, cover today i will uh, tell you about and the pdf i will give you and in the next lesson we will take all these animals and the other animals of uh, uh, schedule schedule one of uh, wildlife protection act 72 also so these, there is a separate list because these are the national protection and the national conservation uh, issues and these are the IUCN uh, protection categories. So this is critically endangered. You can see peacock tarantula. This is critically endangered found in Andhra Pradesh in uh, deciduous forests. Okay. And that's important. Next white bellied heron. Only 50 left in India critically endangered found in Himalayas, Bangladesh, Burma, Bhutan, in Nepal also and recently discovered nesting site in Namdafa National Park that is there in Arunachal Pradesh. Okay. So first such breeding site outside of Bhutan in 14. So it's a critically endangered, not extinct. After critically endangered, they will go towards extinct in wild and then totally extinct. So this is the uh, third dangerous category. Okay. Great Indian Bustard. That is also called a Godavan in Rajasthan. It's a Rajasthan's uh, state bird. It's a very heavy bird and only 15 number they are left and they are only found 90% of their population is found in the Western Rajasthan region in the desert national park of Jaisalmer and critically endangered it is and it is, it is also found in the Cholistan desert area of Eastern Pakistan. So the Cholistan desert is actually across Rajasthan only. Okay. If you build the map of Rajasthan, then it is Rajasthan and it is Pakistan. So Cholistan desert is there. So uh, there also some population is found and it is protected under the WPA Act of 1972 under Schedule 1 and it's a heavy bird and uh, great Indian bustard we call it critically endangered. Please go through all the text. I'm not uh, telling you everything here. I'm only uh, citing their names and their status and uh, the issues they will be very much crucial for the prelims examination this year. So what's 95% they are there in India. Okay. Uh, you can uh, read whole text here you, the picture here in Rajasthan and uh, eat spiny tailed lizards in the desert area and that's important it is also found in the Kutch region of Gujarat that is also a desert area and project Great Indian Bustard is also very much important and that was initiated by the Rajasthan government in 2013 so that's important there uh, some populations were found but now right now only found in the Rajasthan and the uh, border area next black buck sanctuary Rane Bennur black buck sanctuary that was declared as a sanctuary mainly to pr protect black bucks you can see the black bucks here these are protected animals and this Rane Bennur is in Karnataka 
so that may be asked in uh, next bears pochard this is a kind of a duck critically endangered and it's a diving duck found in eastern asia so in russia china india japan vietnam it is found and uh, formerly uh, it was there in vulnerable list but now under the critically endangered list hunting and wetland destruction is the main reason here so that's important next siberian crane a migratory bird you can see uh, and these are the flyways uh, which are given here through through which they actually migrate to the tropical areas like bharatpur india in kevla devgana okay so it comes from a russian region and reaching up to india and it is critically endangered siberian crane very majestic birds the text is given here the details are given here and uh, next you can see all the details these some of them they will be asked certainly in the prelims examination this year also okay mughal era painting of siberian crane by ustad mansur in 1625 that's important so uh, since ages we know this uh, particular bird and this is migration and mainly the poyang lake in china that is related with this bird there their populations are found okay white rumped vulture critically endangered and uh, you see uh, the important populations they are found here only so critically endangered you can see vultures and gold, golden jackal feeding on a carcass golden jackal because they both are eating the dead flesh so that's important but the important uh, uh, characteristic of these uh, uh, eagles are these sorry these vultures are sorry i, I made a mistake uh, a few minutes back i told you that bald eagles they are eating the carcass no eagles are eagles are normal birds they do not eat fleshes the vultures they eat fleshes they are the ultimate uh, detritivorous animals oh, sorry birds okay so vultures these are the birds which are eating flesh and they are cleaning the environment but their populations are declining very heavily so they are critically endangered so it's important bab madha national park in india okay diclofenac sodium is the main reason that uh, indian vulture is under threat of extinction because diclofenac sodium this is the case of biomagnification means as the uh, diclofenac sodium concentration in the bodies that is found in uh, trophic levels and the trophic levels when are rising that means it is reaching uh, up to the level of uh, uh, apex predators and when they are dying then their bodies are eaten by these vultures and the concentration is maximum with the vultures of the diclofenac sodium and that is killing these uh, great magical uh, birds okay which are actually cleaning the environment so diclofenac sodium and its biomagnification that led to the extinction of indian vultures captive breeding program was also run by this uh, uh, save program early 2020 2014 it was uh, launched and saving asia's vultures from extinction and diclofenac sodium was the main issue here bengal florican again a critically endangered uh, bird and it is found in indian subcontinent cambodia and vietnam okay in the uttar pradesh and tarai region it is mainly found bengal florican and in the bengal region also this is found next jaden's cursor it is also critically endangered and uh, you can see very less numbers are found here so now i'm going to stop the lesson now and my time is uh, reaching up to the limit and uh, rest of the material that we will discuss in the later lessons and uh, the pdf you will get here thanks a lot keep watching